Wilson Airport, described by many as one of the best little airports in the world, is under serious threat. For a facility that has been in existence for close to 80 years, the airport now finds itself with no room at all for expansion. In fact, all the land surrounding the airport that could have been possibly used for expansion is now gone, replaced by an ever-growing concrete jungle. With over 120,000 recorded landings and takeoffs every year, Wilson Airport is by far the busiest such facility in this region. But over the last few years, this airport has come under serious threat by property developers like the one behind me. This is a map of the airport as it was in 1993. Back then, plans to expand the facility included a possible new terminal on the eastern side facing the national park. That space, initially used by the University of Nairobi as a research center, is now mysteriously in private hands and is occupied by residential houses. Hard-working men and women, parents eager to own a home, but totally oblivious of the danger they expose themselves or their loved ones to by leaving this close to these deadly machines. Kenya Civil Aviation Authority should have come up and stopped construction of houses around the airport because that was an effort to choke it out of existence. And what we've gotten ourselves into is housing estates around the airport, mushrooming, without any approval or authority, thereby putting flight operations at Wilson Airport at risk. This space here was a subject of a protracted legal battle as a private developer was keen to put up a five-star hotel. He later tried to sell it off to unsuspecting buyers after he was stopped. There seems to be a feeling that they are scared of something, that they might be handling property that might be owned by people that maybe intimidate them in other areas. But what they don't realize is that if they continue to operate that way, the airport will finally meet its demise. A number of housing estates have also come up on the southern end of the airport, parallel to runway 32, the space in between not more than 30 meters. Any slight deviation by an aircraft while on the runway and the plane would head directly into these houses. At that point in time, people might blame the pilot or might blame the maintenance facility that operates that aircraft. But the fact of the matter remains is that those houses have been built there without any approval at all. But what is most shocking is the ease with which these property developers have been allowed to literally choke the airport by building so close to the runways. For an airport this busy, and one that plays host to at least 10 flying schools, the police and KWS air wings, alongside so many other aircraft operators, accidents and mishaps involving light aircraft either landing or taking off from the facility are not uncommon. Such is what happened on the evening of September 14, 2009, when a twin-engine plane developed mechanical problems on takeoff and came crashing down next to houses in Mogoya area of South Sea. In part two of Dying Wilson, we meet the pilot who was in control of that flight. He survived to tell the story.